Isn't that part of the problem that we have now with the old-fashioned politics, uh, Richard, that many of the radical ideas, and perhaps the ones that catch more headlines, particularly at places like this, tend to be on the left, whether it's about the Green New Deal or whether it's about uh, uh, changing the way that uh, we engage with the environment. But a lot of those radical ideas in terms of transformational ideas are actually emerging on the right wing of politics too. How does what you've described as a social democratic Labour Party incorporate, engage with, argue with, but acknowledge the existence of those sorts of radical ideas too? Well, I think we've got to be clear about our values. And I do think actually that people have always... I'm always worrying when a politician says, let me be clear. <laughs> you, you're right to worry. You're right to be uh, worry. Let me be clear. You're correct to worry about that. Um, but I, I think people have always voted in terms of their vision of a better society. The Labour Party has always been associated with a fairer society. For example, uh, Liz uh, mentions one of the dreadful things that the 1945 Labour government did. It also did uh, create the National Health Service against Tory Are you opposition. going to defend the 1947 town and country planning? I'm going to defend that Labour government for creating the National Health Service in the teeth of Tory opposition, which actually is a great example of socialist principles put into practice, a great example of something being run, not for private profit, for, but for public good. I think we can learn about that in other areas. But to go back to uh, the question, because that water, water, transport, energy, these things can be run for the public good as well. So let's take that principle of the NHS and make it more uh, wide. But in terms of your question about the ideas from the right, uh, Vince said that we shouldn't freak out about the advance of the far right. I am freaked out about the advance of the far right. I'm freaked out that there's a possibility that when the votes are counted tomorrow and on Monday, the person who has the stage name of Tommy Robinson could be elected to be a member of the European Parliament representing the North West. So I think the challenge for the left is not to be complacent, but to challenge these ideas of scapegoating migrants. Because when we look at the economic situation, the difference between left and the right is who you blame for it. Do you blame the economic system, which has delivered more inequality and the greater concentration of wealth at the top, the system, or do you blame uh, migrants, people in receipt of social security, people uh, who are disabled people? So I think there's a clear uh, moral choice there. And when the far right gets a hold in our politics, it actually pulls the centre of gravity of politics, even in the mainstream, to the right. And in relation to my own part, I have to say, that's why, under a previous leadership to Jeremy Corbyn, we ended up with those mugs that said controls on immigration, which I was deeply uncomfortable with, because actually they spoke to a wider unwelcome discourse and when you make concessions to that discourse it never ends well for progressive political values for more debates talks and interviews subscribe today to the institute of art and ideas at iai tv